，喂喂喂，有声音吗？嗯、uh, ，Hello everyone, and、uh, I am the Doctor Ho Chong Chen. I'm from the Changgung Memorial Hospital. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, and today I will take to about two hours to introduce the essential orthopedics and the trauma. Uh, actually, <coughs> it's not easy to uh To teach the the in the entire orthopedic course、uh, within two hours. So、uh, today I the I will introduce the、uh, the two main part. The first part is to to introduce the basic terms、uh, in orthopedics, and、uh, another issue is the the basic of the orthopedics or trauma. Okay, so let's start our class.、Uh, Uh, first, uh, uh, I will introduce the uh, the plans or the plans in the when、uh, we describe uh, the terms in the, maybe in X-ray,、uh, you should know the anatomy plans. The first,、uh, there's the three anatomy plans in the, our body. The first is a coronal plan.、Uh, we also say the frontal plan.、Uh, as you as you see in the red line, or the The coronal plane is a、uh, divide the body into the front and the back sections. Okay.、Uh, another plane is the central plane. The central plane is the、uh, green, the green one.、Uh, the central plane divides the body into the left and the right sections. Okay. Also, we see the medium plane. The medium plane is a、uh, divide the body into the equal left and the right parts. Okay. So the third is the SL plane. We also say the horizontal or transverse plane.、Uh, it divides the body into the upper and the lower segment. It's like、uh, in in this picture, the blue、uh, the blue one, the blue the blue sections. Okay, so、uh, <coughs> first you should know、uh, when we talk about the turn, you should know we、uh, describe the which plane. And the next, we, we I will introduce the terms on some, the physical examination. Uh, first, uh, the first term is a、uh, range of motion. We also say it's ROM. Okay. So, uh, when we describe a、uh, range of motion, uh, in the central plane, or、uh, there's are two terms. The first is flexion and extension. That means if we say The flexion and the extension; these two words that means we describe the motion in the central plane, okay. And another, if we wanted to、uh, describe a coronal plane motion, oh, there's two terms. The first term is abduction, and the another term is adduction. And the what is abduction and the what is adduction? I will explain later. And another is the rotation on the axial plane. If we describe the motion in a rotation on the axial plane, we use the pronation and the supination, the two words. And、uh, another is the deviation. Uh, if we, uh, the deviation means uh, uh, the the motion on a, a plane, maybe on the axial plane or coronal plane or central plane, then the all use these terms. But the deviation, we also or sometimes we use the radial deviation and the anal deviation, and also I will introduce later. And the, another is we describe a motion, or we a rotation on a point, or we I,、uh, we will use the internal rotation or external rotation. The first, ah,、uh, this is the set the. In the central plane motion is a flexion extension, just like the picture on the left hand side.、Uh, we see uh, this is the head in the central view, central plane, and、uh, we use、uh, the flexion means forward, and the extension means backward. Okay, so this is a、uh, uh, central plane the motions, and、uh, another in the upper right hand side is the.、Uh, Uh, we we see from the central plane、uh, the wrist、uh, the flexion and the this the flexion the backward it means the extension. So if we use the flexion and the extension word, that means we we say the motion in the central plane motion. And、uh, 
And another is the coronal plane motion. Uh, and we use the two terms, abduction and deduction. Or like this, uh, in the left hand side is the foot, then the, the hand. Uh, the foot, uh, we use the second toes in the center. And uh, if the motion is to close to the center, the coronal plane in the close to the center, we use, uh, we use the term means a deduction. If the motion uh, left the center, it means abduction. Okay, so also it's not in, in the hand. If we use the third fingers as the center, and the, if from another fingers uh, left the left the center motion, it means abduction. Is uh, if the motion is uh, close to the center of the uh, the center, it means a deduction. Also, we use also use this term or uh, majorly on the arm motions. Uh, we use the trunk, trunk for the center. If we have later our hands and our arms, it means the lift to the center. We describe it as the uh, abduction motions, and uh, we drop our arm, drop our arms, and uh, it means the abduction. Okay, another is a rotation on the SEO plane. And the next, will, I will introduce the rotation on SEO planes. Uh, you, we use the turn in the protection and the supination. Actually, the two words is mostly used on the forearm, in all forearms. Sometimes in orthopedics, we use some turns in some specific area, or such less turns. Uh, that means if you use the uh, SEO plane, also like this, like the left hand side, if you use the arm, this is the arm, and this is the forearm. And you, we use the arm as a center, we rotation our forearms. Or the all rotation means the supination. That, mean, that also means that your palm um, in the sky, over the sky. And another is the pronation. Pronation means that your palm on the ground. Or like is the use of the pronation. This pronation and supination means the rotation. <coughs> and uh, another is the deviation. Uh, also, <coughs> the deviation, the terms you use, you usually use on the uh, hand, in your wrist. Or if we are wrist, uh, uh, we use our wrist as a center. We, if we if we move our hand or media side or close our body, it means that the radial deviation. That means it, uh, because in, uh, in our forearm, there's two bones. The outside, the, the lateral side is the outer bone. The medial side is the radial bone. So if we move our hands, close to the side of a radio bone, which means the radiation, radio radiation. And we use our hands literally, literally that means on our deviation. So the two words usually use on the hand, hand movement on the plane. Okay. Uh, another is the, the next is the rotation on point. If we, uh, we <coughs> Uh, the motion we use the turn to describe the rotation. Uh, the first is the uh, pronation and the supination, and uh, the this is the second is used is also sometimes used in the uh, rotation as a center, or oh, like uh, the shoulder joint. We describe on the shoulder joint or the hip joint, and I will de describe later. Uh, the first, if we use the, our Shoulder joint at the center, we rotate on this point. Or oh, uh, if we, <coughs> the hand is into the body, 
your hand rotation according to the body, so that means the internal rotation. If your hand rotation out, out of the body, that means the external rotation. Also, the 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 two the two walls the two walls those some actually usually use on the shoulder joint and the hip joint. Okay, so uh, after the previous introduced, uh, let's do some practice. Uh, let's like this. This is a, a sexual cut. Your sexual plan. So, um, uh, if we see the in front of such to print, uh, this is the knee joint. If we raise our legs, that means the extension, and uh, we put our legs down means the flexion. So uh, we usually we describe our uh, movement of our knee joint uh, usually use the uh, flexion and the extension turns. Okay, and uh, okay, let's try another. Practice the uh, hip joint, hip the arm. Uh, okay, um, in the pictures we see in this, uh, if we describe all these movements, we can see this is a, uh, uh, this means a flexion and the flexion of the hip and the, the, our legs. Or oh, oh. the normal hip flexion also is ten, uh, flexion about 90 degree, maybe over. Or later, maybe one one hundred and twenty degree. Okay, so <clears throat> this picture means we uh, flex our hip and also flex our knee. Okay, we describe. Uh, if we see, we, we talk about a patient with the hip flexion. You can flexion about ninety degree. You can imagine these pictures, these pictures, and uh, we describe a patient with the hip. Uh, fraction about 120 degree with the knee flex about 90 degree. You can Im image these pictures. Okay, so uh, <coughs> the next, uh, if we will, uh, see these pictures, okay, we the low legs, the right low legs rotation. This is rotation according to the one point. Which point is the hip joint? So. Uh, into the body, into the body means the internal rotation. Outer body means the external rotation. Okay, so uh, if we say a patient which the hip can internal rotation about 90 degree, or oh, is incredible, okay? So maybe the normal limited internal rotation uh, for a normal hip about, maybe about 40 degree, or 40, 50, uh, 45 degree. And uh, in this plane, in these pictures, uh, it's another rotation. Is a uh, uh, we describe this in the abduction because we use our trunk as the center. The legs is out of uh, body, so it is a uh, lateral to the center. So it's abduction, and it's uh, a deduction. It means the legs move into inside the body. Okay, so. Uh, when we describe a patient with the abduction to 90 degree, uh, okay, 90 degree, uh, maybe possible. But if we describe a patient with the hip abduction over 130 degree, I think it's impossible. So uh, when I uh, uh, introduce so many terms, I will let you know if we, we uh, sometimes we don't have pictures, but uh, if we want to communication with others, maybe another doctors, you you should talk the language we know. So, uh, you should talk about the basic turn, oh, and uh, you will know the basic turn you use on which print. Okay. So the next is the shoulder arm. Oh, I uh, I introduced the two parties of the hip. Range of motion, the shoulder range of motion. That is because the the, the two part of your, your our body is the most uh complicated motion in our bodies. So, uh, for these pictures or in the sexual plane, that means the shoulder flexion. Okay, this means the shoulder extension. 
And uh, in this turn, this means a reduction. And uh, you a deduction and you pretty your wall is a bit, uh, you, if you drop uh, elevator your arms in a corner plane, there is a deduction. And uh, you drop your arm is a deduction. Okay? So uh, if you rotation, as I say, is rotation on a joint, on a point, uh, it means rotation on a shoulder joint. Uh, if your body is in, is your hands in, in, in the body, medial to the body is the internal rotation, means the hand out literally to the body is the external rotation, okay? And uh, another, the, the next I will introduce the major muscles in our shoulders. Oh, uh, it, it is important because uh, there's uh, uh, the, uh, in our shoulder joint, uh, the major is a, uh, is, uh, is a compo com composed of or from the bone joint and the muscle, I think, and also the muscle is the most in, most important. So, uh, the show the muscle in the shoulder joint, we say that is the rotator cuff. It's very important to know the rotator cuff because the le uh, most of the lesion in the shoulder joint are the rotator cuff lesions. So the first we will should know there's the four muscles. Four muscles the, uh, in the rotator cuff. Okay, you should remember the first is the uh, the most and the, the the most important of the four mu the four muscle is shoe pass by nature's muscle. This is the most important muscle. Okay, the second is the subscapularis muscle. Or is a, uh, this is the frontal view. This is the back view. Right hand side is back view is a frontal view. That means that the shoe pass spinal muscles is, a, is a over the top of the shoulder joint and the subscapularis is the front. <laughs> it's, the front it's, all, it's on the frontal of the uh, shoulder joint. And the, the third is the infraspinatus muscle. In, in, the infraspinatus muscle is uh, composed of the posterior part of the, our shoulder joint. And the, Another one is tears minor. Tears minor is the lower part of our shoulder joint. So you should remember there's a four muscles to uh, to compose the, the rotator cuff. Okay, it's tears minor, not the tears mi major. So every every muscle has his functions to uh ro to move the uh, shoulder joint. If we do not move some uh, movement, or maybe uh, we have a letter, our shoulder it will induce pain, or if, if I intro, internal rotation, my shoulder I will in, uh, increase pain. So maybe there's uh, some lesions of the rotator cuff and uh, some more specifically, you should know which muscle is injured. So uh, <coughs> for the shoe pass spinators, the main function of the, this muscle is to a deduction. It's a reduction. And the, for the infraspinatus, the major function is the external rotation. Okay, the tears minor, the major function is the external rotation. The subscularis, the major function is the internal rotation. That means if you uh, for the shoulder movement, if you Feel pain, then you are sure in the internal rotation. First, you should you should consider which muscle injured. This one is sub subscapularis because the major function of the subscapularis is internal rotation. And if you cannot uh, abduction your arm, your abduction arm, that means maybe you should pass by nature's muscle injured. So the most and the uh, most of the function in the rotator cuff is the shoe pass spinatus because we uh, in a clinic we all, we sometimes we usually see a patient complain about uh, the doctors I um, cannot raise our, our hand or our arms because uh, it's weak or the pain so usually it's the shoe pass spinatus muscle injured okay so uh, you should know you should you should remember uh, the four parts. 
four muscles to in the worker careful and remember which muscle play which motion. Okay. So uh, after the previous introduce, next I will uh, introduce two terms. The first term is the angulation, and the another term is alignment. Okay, so I will introduce the uh, angulation first. Uh, the angulation that means uh, it's not a, uh, a line; it's uh, maybe it's the apex. Okay, so uh, <coughs> if the apex, the location apex laterally, we use also another term is various. Okay, if we apex medially, we use this term near vagus. Okay, so if we use the term means this, this bone is in a various deformity, that means this bone is not in the line, in the, the, the bone is angulation. So the angulation bone, and I will know, you, you should know, in the various means the apex literally. Okay, so. Uh, this uh, most uh, three words, okay, angulation, various, and vagus. And uh, another one is alignment. What the alignment means? The alignment means the anatomical relationship between bones on the X-ray. Alignment means uh, uh, the two bones should in the, the maybe our uh, femur or our uh, forearm. The, the maybe radius and other should in the normally issue on some uh, anatomic relationship, or if you the little two bone is uh, is not on the normal anatomical relationship, you can say these two bones is not a good alignment. So this is angulation. The picture shows the center. The center one means the parallel parallel is no angulation. The left hand side means the angulation, the apex literally. That means the virus. This shows the virus. And the, the right hand side is the apex media. That is, means vagus. So this is the picture for the angulation. So if I describe maybe in the next, in the, in the following, I will say the knee joint, our both knee joint in the, in the Various deformity you should know. You should look, should remember this picture. Well, this is a various deformity, and this is a various deformity. Okay, so this is the picture. Uh, the normal bone, the normal hip alignment. I say this is a lower legs alignment in our normal patients. This is a various deformity. If we use the knee or the FS, this. Uh, this the very deformity means the, the knee uh, apex laterally. Okay, now this is the vagus knee. It means the knee of the apex is medially apex. So uh, this is a normal knee. This is the OA knee. Also our arthritis knee. Okay. So after the Regulation, I will introduce the alignments. What is the alignment? Uh, I, I say that the alignment means the normal relationship between bones. Okay, so uh, as our in the picture shows, this is our hip joint, uh, pelvic, is a sacrum, and it is in our bilateral hip joint. And for the normal alignment, Okay, we drop a line. Okay, the first line is from the side, the lumbar to the the lower part of the sacrum. Drop a line. This line should be in the center of the body. Okay, is the center of the body. If this line is not the center in the body, say maybe say this the the hip joint or maybe the pelvis is not a good alignment. Okay, and the, the second. Number two, three. <coughs> Number two, this the this this pointer is your right upper iliac crest. This is a left upper iliac crest. 
the we drop the two we drop a line between these two points. The point should be parallel to the ground. Okay, so this is a good alignment. If your the the line is not peripheral to the ground, uh, maybe your hip in a another good position, maybe rotation uh, up and down. So it's another good hip alignment. So you now you know what is alignment. Okay, so uh, the third the the third is the this is the tip of the greater to counter. We get a point in the right hand side, and then your left hip we put a, a point on the left tip of the greater to counter. We drop a line between the two point. This point, this line is also may the normally issue. Uh, peripheral to the second, the this second line, and maybe peripheral to the ground. Okay, so if this up down, or maybe this up, or maybe this side is up, it means that your per it, that mean maybe means that your the two legs maybe one shorter and then one longer. Okay, so <coughs> if we describe a hip imbalance, that means it. The hip joint is not in a good alignment. Oh, there's many reasons, uh, many causes to lead to the hip is not in a good alignment, maybe in imbalance. Now, one reason is the leg discrepancy. Okay, if your leg is one is longer and the another one is shorter, or you will make your uh, hip in not good alignment. Like these pictures for this one. Uh, uh, the for the picture, the right femur shaft, or oh, maybe previous there's a fracture and uh, the union with shoulder, and uh, the right hand side is longer. So, uh, your pelvis may be in the good alignment, in a good alignment. May, but maybe you use the uh, because the right hand side is is shorter, and the left left leg is longer. But sometimes uh, in the first maybe use turn. But for uh, many, maybe if you in this condition for many years, maybe you will change to the right hand side. That means this is your, your hip maybe in the end maybe will be a hip imbalance because it's a uh, the two different leg leg lengths for the uh, to for the patient and uh, you will the hip imbalance maybe will occur. Okay, so now I will introduce the, what is the normal alignment for your lower legs. Uh, you should remember the good alignment uh, <coughs> in our body, the hip joint, the knee joint, and the ankle joint, and the second toe of our foot. In, if you use the lines, the four points should be on the same line. That is a good point. If you if the one of this point not in the uh in this line, that maybe there's a poor alignment or not a good alignment, there's something wrong. So maybe we should find out which which point is failure or which point have a lesion to cause it's a poor alignment. Okay. So <clears throat> Um, next, I will introduce the knee alignment. Knee alignment uh, maybe is a simple, but also we can say it's complicated. The simple is the good alignment means this is a patella. Okay, if we drop a line uh, in the center of the knee, the patella should be in the center of this line. If we, the patella is out of the center, usually out of the center. Very few is the medial center. Sometimes the out of the center, uh, we will that will uh, we will say this is a poor knee alignment, and uh, it will cause some pain or some limited uh, range of motion. Okay, so we let's picture we we also see in the previous uh PowerPoint. So, but in this in this we use the knee alignment to. We check these these pictures to explain these pictures. 
uh, as I say, uh, there's a good alignment means the hip joint, her knee joint, her knee, knee and the ankle joint should be on one line. Should be on one line. Uh, if we are patient with a bow legs, bow legs uh, means the knee, it, this is a, uh, in angulation terms, we say this knee is in a various deformity. That means the apex laterally. Okay, if the knee joint is not in the line of the, uh, in the good knee alignment, is that maybe is the knee will literally to the line or maybe medial to the line. If the knee is, is the knee joint is literally to the, the line, knee alignment line, okay, we, say, we should say this is the ball legs. So uh, if we want to re to reconstruction the patient to a normal alignment, or maybe we use we treat this patient, maybe use the surgery like the, maybe the total knee arthroplasty or the uni knee arthroplasty, we should reconstruct. Our our main goal is to re, to to make the knee center to the normal. Maybe let the knee center to uh, to back to the line again. Okay, so if the knee joint is medial to the line, okay, we should say this is a uh, vagus deformity. Okay, you you can also see a knuckle knees, or because for these patients the knee sometimes knock together when you work, so we also say this is a knuckle knees. Okay, uh, after the, uh, uh, the range of motion and uh, the shoulder joint, uh, the, the hip joint, uh, another important part in our orthopedics is the spine. Okay, the spine, uh, how we should describe the spine curvatures. Okay, so in the, also in the sexual view, in the sexual we use the two terms to describe the curvatures. The first is uh, lordosis, and uh, the nala is uh, kyphosis. And uh, if we describe a uh, curvature of the spine in a coronal view, we say we use the term of uh, scoliosis. Okay, so uh, <coughs> we should know uh, before we we describe uh, maybe a, a wrong X-ray or the, maybe a, a disease, we should know which the what is the normal range. Okay, so in a cervical uh, sagittal view, in a, the normal rotatory curve is uh, about a thirty degree to forty degree. All right, you should know in the cervical region, the curvature is always the normal curvature is a rotatory curve. Okay, in the quarter degree, maybe the 30 degree, the 40 degree. If you uh, out of this curvature curve, this, this curve maybe is some, it will make some wrong. In and, uh, another part is the thoracic. The thoracic normal curvature is a kyphotic curvature. And uh, the, the angle always, always arrange from the 20 to 40 degree. And uh, the most important part is the lumbar curvature. Lumbar curvature is a rotatory curve. Always a rotatory curve. It's uh, about 30 to 50 degree. So for the left, uh, left side, this is uh, the normal uh, lo the spine curvature in our bodies. Okay, in the central pain, the cervical, you know, is a rotatory curvature. The thoracic is a kyphotic so curvature and the lumbar is the rotatory curvature. If the, the, the kyphotic curvature is over the normal range, or it will cause the kyphosis. Kyphosis means the over kyphotic curvature. Okay? So if the rotatory curvature is over the, side, the normal range, it will cause the lordosis. Okay? So uh the three the, the pictures in this point point we should we, we can say we can see the left the left is a normal the health patient okay 
the from the digital view, we should know the top, the head, from the foot, may sh should be on one line. Okay, if the patient with too much, too much lordotic curvature over the lumbar spine, it will cause maybe the trunk more back deviation, more back deviation, or sometimes in the clinical, it will, uh, that means in the poor alignment, not in the normal alignment, maybe you will cause the back pain, sometimes discomfort, or maybe uh, uh, movement, some some discomfort, in, especially on the movement. And the, another is the kyphosis. This picture is kyphosis. Sometimes the most kyphosis part is uh, the cause, uh, maybe location on the thoracic curve. Or if the thoracic curve is over the kyphotic curvature, or that may means your uh, back will be hump. You get hump and your gaze maybe uh, see the downward and uh, your body height will decrease. Okay, so uh, we should know if we describe a lordosis or kyphosis, you should you should have the two pictures in your in your mind. And another is the scoliosis. The scoliosis was described in a cor coronal plane. So that means the if we see the coronal plane, the the spine is not in a stretch in a straight line, or it's a curve. Okay, so I will introduce later. So if your sexual view is not in a good alignment, or we say this is a sexual imbalance, okay? So in this picture, the left hand side is the normal. It's a patient with a good alignment or good sexual balance, oh, okay? With the normal kyphosis, the, the head to the end, the foot should be a straight line. But if a patient with a hyper kyphosis over the, the thoracic curve, it will make you feel more kyphosis and uh, sometimes it will lose the, the body height and the anterior chest will collapse and the, your head will forward in a forward posture. Okay, so uh, the four, the right hand side picture shows uh, uh, some problems. Oh, if we see the patient with these pictures, or oh, maybe you should sometimes know what's the problem over the patients. Okay, if you, you see the patient walk into your clinic with these pictures, or you should, with uh, the butyl is more promptly, so you should maybe know the patient is a lumbar overload dosis. And you, if your patient walk with these pictures, you should, maybe you can, disp you, you, you can say this patient with the thoracic kyphosis and the major lesion maybe over the thoracic lesion, the area. Okay, so with the thoracic kyphosis, it will make your head more forward. Okay. So <clears throat> this picture also says that another term of the sexual imbalance and if we use, we you have the, the patient have the sexual imbalance in the clinical way uh, that we are they will show what, what kind of pictures uh, for for it or for this. We can say this. This is the B. We should in the sexual view. I say uh, the main the uh, each part of this uh, this cervical uh, this spine region should have its own curvature. But if there's no more curvature, it's a straight line. Okay, that we are we we will say this B is the flatter. That means the patient flatter back. Or it will make your center, your 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 body center is from the uh, posterior to the anterior, and the patient is not easy to walk smooth. And sometimes it will uh, get it get easy to maybe sliding down, whatever. Okay, so uh, the sexual imbalance is very important for the spine surgeon to reconstruction the patient from the. E even is to a normal, okay. So, <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, so the next is the current plane. We use this term is uh, the we use, <coughs> we describe a uh, spine in the current plane. We we say this is a scoliosis. So if you use a scoliosis, that means you describe it is the current plane. You should not use a scoliosis to describe a a spine with the hyper lordosis or the hypo lordosis. Okay. So uh, there's many types of scolo scoliosis. Or oh, in the, this picture, the left hand side is a health patient. We should see from the uh, in the coronary plane, the the spine should be on a straight line. But if the uh, patient with uh, thoracic is uh, uh, in the coronary, not out of the the maybe out of uh, the straight line or medial straight line, we use in the thoracic part. We say this is thoracic scoliosis. If the uh, the curvature is uh, is is located on the lumbar lumbar area? Maybe we see this as uh, lumbar scoliosis. If the curvature located over the thoracic and lumbar, we see this scoliosis is a lumbar thoracic lumbar scoliosis. And maybe it's a two part. Over one is from the thoracic, and the one curve, one curvature is located on the lumbar curvature. So it's a combined, maybe we say this is a combined scoliosis. Okay, so this is the picture. Often we see this patient, okay, we should know in the coronary view, we say this patient has a scoliosis. Now maybe the location, the, the location maybe on the thoracic and the lumbar region, okay? And also this is the curvature. It's also we describe this patient with the scoliosis. And this is after the surgical correction, okay? This also is a, uh, we, we describe this patient with scoliosis. We do not, you, we cannot say this patient with uh, lordosis or kyphosis, okay? But also this is a sur after surgery correction. Okay, so uh, the next part we will describe the uh, orthopedic anatomy. And this, uh, we should first, uh, I will introduce uh, some types of joints. Uh, in our bodies, we have uh, many, many joints and uh, not all not all the joints are in the same, are in the same, so there's many types. The first uh, is uh, the pivot joint. Also, we use this pivot joint, uh, the, the example is on the C1 and C2 joint. The different, Type of joint have different functions. Okay, the second is the hinge is a hinge joint. The hinge joint are all majorly the the example is the knee joint, and the third is the saddle joint. Also, uh, I will explain the the different type of this joint in the next section, the next PowerPoint. Okay, so you should to take a, a quick view of a, we have about six to seven kinds of uh, joint. Okay, so the, four, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the, the, the sixth, okay. Next, I will introduce like a, this one. Uh, first, I will introduce the purple joint. The purple joint uh, is all, the most uh, important uh, joint is over the C1 and C2. Okay, the purple joint means in the, it's a uniaxial uh, uniaxial movement uh, and uh, the major function is rotation. Uh, for our C1 and C2, the C2 dance is uh, uh, over the C1 virtual body and uh, the major function for our head is rotation. Okay, so this is the pivot joint, the function of the pivot joint. Okay, so uh, another is a uh, hinge joint. Hinge joint is a concave and a convex composition and the, the major function is monoaxial movement. The example is uh, such a, like our knee joint and our uh, elbow joint, like this one. This is a con <coughs> it's a concave and you know, convex, or it's a hinge joint, or it's a monoaxial movement. And uh, the third is the saddle joint. The saddle joint is a biaxial movement. That means the biaxial movement, that means the joint motion is more than 
previous, I said maybe previous than the, the motion was bigger than the uh, pivot joint and the hinge joint because it's a biaxial movement. Or the most, the, the example is in our wrist joint. Okay, so another is the ball and suck joint. Or the, <coughs> the ball and suck joint is composed, also composed in the concave and the convex two components. And there is a wrong shape, always a wrong shape. And the, the example is the hip joint and the shoulder joint. Uh, the ball and suck joint have the multi direction movement. So in our shoulder and our hip joint, we are a lot of the these two joint, these two kinds of joint, uh, we we'll do a lot of uh, kinds of uh, motion. Okay, and uh, the next is the condyloid joint. The condyloid also the condyloid joint also composed of a con it's also con concave and uh, convex joint, and it's an oval shape. If this is the wrong shape, is a ball and suck joint. If the the shape is oval shape, we can say this is a condyloid joint. It also a biaxial movement. The 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 example is like our wrist, is our wrist. So as we know, if we you the joint is have multi duration, multi axial movement, that means uh, the motion the the joint will. Uh, give us more movement, more kinds of movement. Is a, that means it's more important movement, important joint for our body. Okay. So, uh, after introduce the uh, joint, the different kinds of joint, I will uh, another we will say the bone terminology. Oh, uh. <coughs> The first uh, we will describe uh, these trends we should know because these trends we should uh, communicate with some uh, doctors. We, you, you, will, you will say uh, this is a medical trend. Uh, the first is epiphysis. When we describe epiphysis, that means the bone, the end, or the head. Okay, so like the pictures, epiphysis means this way. This is a long bone, this is the top of the bone, and the, the end of the bone. So, uh, also, if you not uh, use the orthopedic terms, you can also say this area. If we wanted to say this area, we can say this is the top of the bone, and this is the end of the bone. But if you use the orthopedic term, you can say this is the epiphysis area. Okay, proximal epiphysis area, and this is a distal epiphysis area. Okay, so another is the diaphysis. Diaphysis means the shape of a bone. So if I say the, the maybe some lesion in the diaphysis, you should know the the the, the lesion is on the shape of a bone. Also, you can say one lesion <laughs> over the shape shape of a bone. Okay, and another say is another is the metaphysis. What is metaphysis? Metaphysis is between the epiphysis and the shaped like this zone. It's a transition zone. Okay? Or oh, transition zone is the metaphysis. Now, another one is the articular joint. Oh, uh, from uh, over uh, both sides of one bone, it should have a joint. So, uh, we can say this uh, maybe that. Top of the bone or end of the bone, okay. Or you you can also say that the relation is in, is in articular joint, okay. And uh, now like another term is the periosteum. What is the what is the periosteum? Uh, periosteum is a connective tissue lining on the bone, lining on the bone. Because for our bones, uh, with the uh, for the bone, the body supply. We can uh the bright supply major from two parts. The first part is from the vessels in tramedullary, and the uh, second is over the soft tissue. Uh, from the soft tissue lining on the bone, and the, the soft tissue on the bone, we say this is a periosteum. Okay, the marrow. The marrow is also a cavity. And uh, endo endosidium. 
lightning inner cavity. Okay. Another most important is apple, apple faces. Apple faces means the bone tubercle, or like this. Uh, over the bone, uh, beside the bone, any tubercle beside the bone, we can say this apple faces. Another most important term is the faces. That means the growth plate, growth plate. Uh, in our adult, uh, in adult, there's no faces because the faces are, is, uh, are all closed, were all already closed in adult. But uh, for a child or infant, there is a faces still open. So if the injury to the faces, maybe it will lead to the growth rate. Okay, so uh, you should know these terms. I know it's bored, but um, you should use the orthopedic term to describe a bone. Okay. Okay, the next chapter, the bone and the muscle and the movement, uh, I will introduce another part is the nerve innovation in our orthopedics. Okay, so uh, I will describe the two major words. The first is motor. Oh, the nerve innovation about motor, oh, we should use that. Also, we use the, main, the orthopedic or medical term, like a myotone, okay? Uh, we should, uh, how to describe a motor function. We also, we sometimes use the muscle power to describe a motor function, okay? So, uh, if we say the motor function is injured, maybe evaluation, we should see we should understand uh, maybe some the more the myotone is is innovated by the cervical root or lumbar root, okay. So if we describe about a sensory lesion, we should use the term of dermatome. Or if we want we use the dermatome, that means we say this is maybe a sensory lesion, or not. That means the pain or numbness, okay. The most dermatome with uh. The innovation, the region, the innovation is the cervical and the lumbar region. Okay, so uh, after we know the specific dermatome innovation or myotone innovation, we can, uh, if a patient, we, if we see a patient is with uh, some lesions or maybe uh, the less numbness. And especially over the knee or especially the numbness areas over the site, we should know maybe you should know which uh, which level maybe is a lesion. So if you remember the myotone and the dermatone, you should uh, you will identify the, the lesion level by the physical information. Okay, so these are the my the cis myotone like a cervical myotone. Uh, the C5, uh, every nerve root have its function, just like this. If you use your wrist, okay, this is an extension. If we cannot, extension is innovated by C6. If your wrist is a fraction, is innovated by the C7. If you cannot do this lesion, maybe you cannot uh, uh, extension your wrist, uh, maybe your C6, C6, C6 nerve root is uh, injured or maybe some lesions. Okay, so every root have its uh, uh, function. So you, if you remember this mountain, you will identify the lesion over which which level. <laughs> this is the dermatome. The uh, mountain and the dermatome are different. The diff the the dermatome means the sensory. Or if you use fear numbness over your big hand or your your <coughs> your big hand, maybe in the C. You, you can maybe you can see the you can say this patient has a C six lesion, and uh, the numbness the numbness all uh, over the second and third fingers maybe the lesion is a C seven. So if you remember all the dermatome region, mm -hmm. and uh, you can uh, maybe you can identify which level is the injury from the physical emanation, okay. Another is the lumbar spine myotone. The lumbar spine myotone is major in innovate the lower legs. Okay, so if you are uh, knee, if you flex your leg, it's uh, innovated by L3 and L4. 
and uh, you flex uh, your knee, it's innovated by L5 and S1. If you cannot do this, uh, maybe flex or you cannot do the uh, uh, flexion or extension, there's uh, some lesion. In maybe in the, the this L3 or L4, maybe in the L5 or S1. Okay. So another is uh, L spine dermatome. The dermatome over L1 is innervated the proximal site and the medial site. And if the dermatome L2 is medial, more distally over medial site, and uh, the L3 is uh, more is the over the lateral section of the site, and the L4, the dermatome is from the side to leg. If you feel numbness from the side to leg and to the toe, maybe it's the L5 lesions. So, uh, if the patient complain, you, you should ask, you should examine the patient and uh, ask and uh, take a history to know which part of the lesion. Uh, discomfort and maybe you should, you should identify, you can identify which label is injured. Okay, this is more details. Okay, so. Okay, so maybe let's take a break for about three minutes.
说，请你，嗯、呃，我已经有安帮你们取消静音了，但是我是送出邀请，所以你可以在你的那个电脑，然后帮医师打开声音跟视讯，应该要在你那边操作。洛洛奇，你可以吗？你在那个就是高雄台跟教学部的那个电脑，可以把声音按取消静音，然后开始视讯。你那边可以启动吗？有有听到，不过有一点点那个 echo 的回音，可能是你们有两台同时打开，对不对？嗯、我目前已经有看到有简报了。简报。<音>有有听到，有听到您的声音，有听到。有看到，看到意思有回来了，<笑>谢谢
Hello， 有有听到。Hello， so， 呃、uh, ，let's to。对对对对对。Hello, so the next I will introduce the second part of our lesson. So it's about the trauma. Let's talk about the trauma. Uh, the uh, the first uh, was the definition of the bonding fracture. What is the bonding fracture? The bonding fracture means the disruption of the bonds. On the normal structure or hostness, and sometimes、uh, we use a term like the cracker or break or rupture in a bone. This all means a fracture.、Uh, there are many hows and whys to a bonding fracture, right? So, if we want to diagnose a fracture, which we can use、uh, from the three. Aspect. The first is a physical examination, and、uh, the second is clinical picture, and the third、uh, is the radiography. So,、uh, the clinical picture, the picture of the fracture,、uh, we should describe the history of the trauma and、uh, how you you get the injury. Maybe the traffic accident, or maybe a fall, or maybe some drunk, maybe a lot of、uh, trauma episode. You should take detailed history. And、uh, then you will ask a patient about the symptoms and the signs. And、uh, some we what symptoms and the signs we should、uh, we should ask.、Uh, first is the、uh, pain. If you feel the the pain, the location, and if you、uh, feel tenderness, and、uh, if there's a swelling and、uh, deformity or cryptus. What is cryptus? Cryptus means the like a, a popping sounds over the joint. Or it means the cryptus, and uh, which uh, if your your legs or your the the bony fracture, maybe you always lost the function. You should know which which part of your uh forelimbs uh lost the function, and if there's a abnormal move, or the most important is if there's a neurovascular injury. So a good uh also patient history contains. The first is the onset, and、uh, when, and the duration, how long, and the location of a problem, and uh, uh, what is the limitation and the, the deviation attribution to the problems, and、uh, you also should take the history about about the past history, like the surgical history, as uh, uh, maybe uh, or if there's、uh, some orthopedic surgery and the prior anesthesia history. Okay. Also, the next you should ask your personal history, like the if there's also、uh, some comorbidity like、uh, the CV, hypertension, DM, however. So <laughs> another is a physical examination. Basically, now、uh, some point we should also notice on the physical examination, ah,、uh, such like、uh, you should expect and the、uh, palpation and the、uh, uh, range of motion in the Open of the injury, the limb, or、uh, and、uh, you should use the strain to ask the patient to use the strength, and the、uh, the sensory, the reflex, the gait, and the stability. Oh,、uh, many aspect you should notice when you do the physical examination. Okay, so <clears throat> if the the most important and the most serious uh, uh is a neurovascular injury. Okay, so. If a patient got the fracture, it's a, a for for us it's a simple thing. But if a patient with got a fracture with the neurovascular injury, that's a big problem. So <clears throat> always to do the neurological examination to the patient with the fracture <clears throat> or trauma, and always document the neurological status. Okay, it's very very important. And、uh, also, the most important, another important thing is is the vascular examination. Always check the pus, or、oh, distal to the fracture area. So if there's a no pus sensation, it's a very very emergency、uh, things. Okay, the missed vascular injury can be 
devastating, devastating things. So <coughs> another the the surprise to uh, radiography. If you you ask the uh, history and the uh, physical emanation and the land, you should uh, you will arrange your patient to do some radiographies. And uh, what kind of radiography you should arrange and uh, you should notice the first uh, name, the date, and uh, and the uh, kinds of view you should take. Okay, and uh, uh, you should notice what kind of uh, bones and the joint you should want to see. And uh, if you want to know the skeletal maturity, if the feces, if this is a patient still with feces, is the feces is not, is still awake, is not uh, close, you should know the feces maybe. Some, some, pay, uh, some doctors will say the feces is a, a facial line. So you should know what is the feces or what is the facial line, okay? And uh, now it's a, it's there's a soft tissue swelling, and uh, if the fracture involves the bone and the joint, okay? The bone and joint may be involved, maybe will co <laughs> will lead to the dislocation. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> another part is the <clears throat> importance of a physical examination, and uh, you should remember never trust uh, someone else examination. Always put your hands on the patient to see for yourself. And uh, this is a very, very important thing. That means if you wanted to uh, uh, approach this patient, you should always uh, put your hand by yourself, okay? Do not only uh, listen to uh, some, someone says, oh, the patient uh, is a good circulation, you should check uh, the distal circulation of the patient, okay? And uh, always trust your examination, okay? After you do the examination, and you should trust your exam examination result, okay? Just like this picture, okay? This is a, uh, uh, this is a wrist, this is a wrist. I think this is not a good alignment, or also you can see it's not a, a, in a good posture. Uh, no, it, I think it's not a, a no more alignment of the wrist. Okay, so this deformity, or we can say this deformity is uh, like this. Like this pictures in the left hand side is, uh, uh, we can say this is like a dinner fork deformity. Okay, if a patient get a history of a trauma, and uh, he feel pain, and the limited our uh, limited motion over the wrist joint. Uh, and uh, the picture shows like the dinner fork deformity. Okay, maybe this bit, the, uh, that means uh, maybe there's a fracture over the distal radius. So uh, you will see these pictures and uh, combine with the trauma history. So you may, be, before you take uh, the x ray, some you may have the impression of the distal radius fracture for these patients. Okay, so another is to. Uh, to see and uh, to understand what is an open or a closed fracture for the left hand side, uh, the bone, the bone, there's a big wound, and uh, with the bone exposure out of skin with the broken bone. So, this is the open fracture. Okay, for this one, <coughs> there's no open wound, but uh, the bone, the skin with the massive ecchymosis. And uh, maybe limited uh, pain and swelling, so maybe there's a cross fracture. If you wanted to make sure there's a cross fracture, maybe we should take the x ray to make the final diagnosis. But if with a patient with a bigger wound with the bone exposure, I think maybe uh, we can say this is an open fracture. Okay. Like this. This is a wrist. Or this is uh, the bone exposure. It is a wound with the bone exposure. So uh, the broken bone. So I, uh, the first time we can see this is an open fracture. The open fracture may be uh, the radius or maybe the ana. Or but uh, we should take an X-ray to know which bone is uh, the open fracture. So <clears throat> after history taking, physical examination, and then now uh, we will uh, do the radiography. But we do a radiography, we, we should know how to read the x-ray. 
I think it is also important things for the orthopedic doctors. So <coughs> the uh, to reading a radiography, we should know and how to describe the anatomy of the certain fracture. Okay, so uh, and uh, we also know how to describe describe the finding of and uh, the disorder finding of the X-ray. Okay, so now I will teaching you how to reading a uh, X-ray. Okay, so the first uh, we should know the first. The first which you know, you should know to say what is the anatomy structure you look in the picture, okay? And uh, what location? Oh, that I said the previous, uh, the <coughs> the fracture line, the fracture may be in the diaphysis or maybe in the metaphysis or maybe in the epiphysis, okay? Or intra or extra articular environment. <coughs> so, and <coughs> another trend is to say the flexural line direction. Okay, <coughs> there's a four terms. We, how to describe it, the, the flexural line may be transverse, maybe oblique, will be maybe spiral or maybe, maybe butterfly, and I will introduce laterally. Or let, use this specific and the medical term, and you, after you listen to the, uh, the, the medical term, and uh, you will get the image on your brain uh, or what kind and what what is the picture what what is the picture for the picture bone. Okay, so another medical term is the condition of the bone. Uh, we use some terms like the comminution, and the comminution means that the fracture is involved three or more parts, and uh, another term is segmental fracture. Segmental fracture means uh, there's a, a maybe three part or maybe there's a big middle fragment over the uh, long bone fracture. And the another one is butterfly segment and uh, incomplete fracture, avulsion fracture, stretch fracture, impact fracture. And I will in, in, in explain later. Okay. So also we can also add a deformity describer like a displacement. And angulation, or angulation means various angulation or vacuous angulation, or maybe the bone with the rotation, maybe shortening, or maybe distraction. These are specific terms you should, you can use to describe uh, uh, on an X-ray. So first, you should know which bone. Okay, so the, the, you should know the name of the bone. Okay, so this is very important. So another, uh, the steps for describe uh, X-ray, huh? I introduced, uh, you have uh, maybe you see the, have the mnemonic, the, the, the word says the old acid, okay? The old acid means the uh, apprehension of each, each turn, okay? So you, sh you can remember use the old acid, okay? O, o means, you, you you can describe it with a D. the first is O O means this is open or closed fracture, okay. The second you should know you should remember is locate L O L O means location which location is the diaphysis or epiphysis or the metaphysis, and the D means a degree means the it's a complete fracture also incomplete fracture, and another is A if this fracture with articular extension, articular extension. And the C means uh, if uh, is the fracture is a convolution or is a pattern fracture, is a simple fracture, okay? And I, I means the intrinsic bone quality. Uh, if uh, it, it is a bone quality is good, or is a poor, is, uh, it may be uh, uh, later to the, the doctors to decide if the patient should be surgery or conservative treatment. And D means the displacement, angulation, and rotation. So <clears throat> if you do not know how to describe a X-ray or a patient with fracture issue, you can use the uh, nanomic term uh, O acid, or you should, you should describe about four and the seven, this seven, the day, seven part to, to finish uh, a good, uh, to do a good uh, X-ray reading. Okay, so uh, let's talk about open fracture. Open fracture, 
it's very easy. It like it is simple because the the definition is means the bone is uh, uh, the fracture bone with the open wound and uh, we in the the bone is penetrating through the skin. Okay, so if the fracture area with the bone exposure and there's a uh, wound around the fracture bone, we can always say this is the open fracture. If there's no wound, that is the closed fracture. Okay, it's simple. So location, uh, I already, uh, already introduced in the previous, so I will skip this. <laughs> so keep this uh, power point. And uh, the degree of the fracture, and the uh, degree of fracture, that means the two term always we use a complete fracture and the incomplete fracture. Complete fracture means uh, we have the bone, the construction, the structure of the bone, we have the cortical bone out, outside the bone. And for the cortical bone, the complete cortical bone circumferential involved, we say this fracture is a complete fracture. Okay, so if the fracture is not all the way through, or only one cortex involved, we say this is an incomplete fracture. Okay. And uh, if the A means the articular extension, A does this, uh, we should know the fracture is, does this fracture involve the articular? Or like, if the, if the fracture is involved the articular, maybe we should do, we favor the surgery then conservative treatment. If a lot, this, this, this fracture did not involve the articular, articular service, maybe uh, it will maybe not so require surgery. Because for the, <coughs> the fracture with articular involvement, maybe you, uh, the outcome may be poorer than the, not than the fracture with, without articular extension. Okay, so it does the fracture is, with articular extension is very important. Okay, so and another term is the comminution pattern. Uh, <coughs> okay, let's describe uh, what is the transverse. Transverse fracture means the simple fracture. The term is a uh, transverse. Okay, transverse fracture. And the oblique also means the simple fracture. So viral also means the simple fracture. This is not uh, this. If we use, we use these three terms, that means the fracture is a simple fracture, is not a comminution fracture. If we do not use this term, that means maybe mean means the fracture is coming is is not the fracture is not easy to treat, such like a segmental or comminution fracture. Okay, so transverse means less. This one the picture shows transverse. Okay, it's a simple fracture, and uh, this picture is the oblique fracture. Okay. Oblique and the spiral fracture. Uh, in biomechanics, there's uh, in the picture, uh, there's two pictures. Uh, uh, sometimes we can, uh, it's not easy to differentiate, but the, the biomechanical injury of this patient is not totally different. Okay, for the oblique fracture, the, maybe the mechanical force always, uh, always uh, bending force to make a bone fracture with uh, some uh, not transverse, it's a little uh, oblique, okay? So for a spiral fracture, the, the major mechanism, the injury always torsion, or the bone maybe is the tortured with the bone fracture, okay? And another turn is the linear or longitudinal fracture. Linear fracture like this picture, a linear fracture uh, that means uh, uh, the fracture line is in the in the one line. Uh, that's only in the fracture line, one line. Now with uh, maybe with one cortex, with one cortex involved. There. Also, we can also see, say the linear or longitudinal fracture is a uh, uh, incomplete fracture. And uh, this is a segmental fracture. And the second, the segmental fracture means the bone fragment into more than two part segmental places, uh, place. Or then, uh, the fracture line do not contact like the, 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 the picture over the center. Uh, that means it's a more comminution and the, 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 the injury power is more than the simple fracture. And it's not, it's also not easy to treat. And another one is a comminution fracture. The comminution fracture 
in definition is a broken bone crushed into more than three pieces. Like the picture, if you see this is one, two, three, or more than three pictures, we can see this is a comminution fracture. Also, this is also, in this picture is also more than, the fracture fragment is also more than three pieces. So we can also say this is a, a combination fracture. Okay, another is the compression and the impact fracture. Or I think this is the sim more simple fracture and the more stable fracture. Or it's the impact force or to make a two bone fracture but the impact together. So uh, like this, uh, like this fracture the, is more stable, so that means maybe it's more easy to heal the, with the conservative treatment if you uh, if the, the fracture attack. So another is the buckle the torus fracture. The buckle and torus fracture always used in the uh, childhood. The term always in the childhood. It's also it's also a kind of incomplete fracture. Okay. Uh, just like this one is a radius, okay? It's a radius fracture with like a a torus. Is, uh, it's kind of a, we we can describe a torus means a ring. The uh, the cortex has a ring, that means a fracture line, but it's incomplete fracture, not a total displacement. Okay, so another is the detraction fracture and the avulsion fracture. Detraction uh detraction fracture means the fracture. Line make a bone into uh, far away to make a fracture line far away, and the another is a vacuum fracture. As we know, the bone has um, the tendon always have a tendon insertion. If the fracture, the bone, <coughs> the tendon insertion side, the bone fracture is over the tendon insertion side, like this picture in the shoulder, or as we say, it's the supraspinatus. In uh, touch on the gray, greater to over the humor, humor shaft, and uh, if, if the broken the humor shaft and the, the tendon, uh, the, the tendon get the bone, uh, leave, leave the bone from the uh, normal bone. So I, we can use, we can say this is a, a vacuum fracture or the fracture with the tendon insertion side. Okay, so. Uh, also, we we also need to uh, understand the, and the, the consider the intrinsic bone quality for uh, a patient with fracture. Like this picture in the X-ray, it's a normal bone quality. Okay, in X-ray, the uh, if we got a more higher density or like a white zone, if we you get a more white, that means it's a good bone quality. If we got a more dark bone, is uh, it, it means it's a poor bone quality. Like this, <laughs> compared with the two left hand side, the right hand side have uh, got a more dark bone. The bone have more dark and more porosis. That means it's also painier. Oh, okay. Compared to the left hand side, the bone is more white and more high signal. Or well, that means it's a uh, uh, more the uh, bone density is higher than the normal bone. Is we can see we can say this is increased bone density, and also we can use the term as osteopetrosis. <coughs> Another is uh, we use it as osteochelosis. That means the focal area, like this, like this, like this picture, the focal area with higher density, and the focal area have decreased density. Or uh, uh, that means if, uh, if a patient with this. Uh, pictures sometimes they are related to some it means the patient has got some specific illness. Okay, so we can use this term as the osteoporosis. <coughs> okay, so the next is uh, D. D means the displacement. We use the angulation or rotation to describe the fracture pattern, and uh, uh, I already said in the previous PowerPoint, so I will skip this PowerPoint. Okay, angulation, or you can describe this. Uh, maybe you should, you should describe this angulation. You know the apex media or makes an apex media. Okay. And uh, rotation. And uh, you should know uh, if the fracture is over the shaft of the long bone, maybe it will, re uh, will happen the, the 
uh, bone in fragment rotation problem. So <coughs> you should describe, uh, also describe a rotation. <coughs> Just like this, uh, for this picture in left hand side, the normal hip, uh, hip joint and the proximal femur, and then you fracture over the femur neck, or maybe in this X-ray you can see. In this X-ray, there's no lesser trigenter. Normally, you cannot see the lesser trigenter on the plane, uh, plane view of the pelvic X-ray. But in this picture, after the, the femur neck fracture, we can see the lesser trigenter. That means the femur shaft has uh, the gutter rotation after fracture. Okay. <clears throat> Another important issue is the uh, feces fracture, or oh, is uh, another another term we say is the Sutter Harris fracture. This this Sutter Harris fracture only specific use for describing the feces fracture, or oh, it's only used for the feces fracture, and that means you you we use this term only for the patient still with the feces. Okay, so. This is normal. Or if uh, <coughs> SATA means uh, also the apprehension of the uh, fibrous walls. Uh, type one is the straight fracture. Straight, straight fracture means the fracture. <coughs> straight fracture means the fracture is over the feces. Okay. And above, above fracture means the fracture lines above the feces. Or the fracture lines above the feces. So it's, yeah, so this is the type two fracture, and we can say S A A, and the L L means the below means the fracture line is below fracture below the feces. Okay, type four is through T means through through means the fracture line through the feces. Okay, now R means the crushed 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 is a type five type five means the the feces scale was a gut impact impression force means the feces was impact. So uh, the Sata Harris fracture, okay. So other this is the other signs of the fracture. <coughs> like this picture, we see this is the uh, the periosteal reaction. As we say the periosteum is a, is the soft tissue, the connective tissue over the bone. Uh, if uh, so normally the cortical bone, the the thickness of the of the cortical bone may be the same, but for this picture we can see the cortical bone is more thicker in the area, so maybe is the periosteum, uh, the periosteum got some inflammation or maybe uh tumor or like some reaction, so to so make the 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 cortical bone more thicker, so. We can see this is a per we can say this uh phenomenon is a periosteal reaction. Okay. And for this picture is beyond the normal bone, we can see this is uh when we the bone is a healing process, we can see a lot of bone around the fracture side, we can see this is a callus formation. And another side of fracture, this is the uh, we can see this is a fat paste sign or cellular sign. What is the fat paste sign and the cellular sign? <coughs> As this picture says, there's no bone. Actually, <coughs> actually there's no obvious bone fracture over the picture. But uh, the soft tissue, soft tissue was around the bone is more darker. As we drop the, the, the line, in the inside the line, yeah, it's a more darker. That means maybe there's soft tissue in injury or some tissue swelling is like a sale. So that also means maybe there's a fracture. So if we can now see the linear uh, the fracture line over the bone, but we see the soft tissue uh, swelling around the bone, maybe we can see. We, we, should, we should consider if there's the linear or uh, maybe the linear fracture over the area. Okay, conclusion. So, uh, Fracture, we should know how to read the X-ray. If you want to read a good X-ray, you should use the the medical term to uh, to describe the X-ray. And uh, <coughs> uh, how to uh, to learn this uh, medical term uh, the is is one to communicate with and share your consultations. 
and uh, always you cannot uh, maybe you <laughs> the conversation cannot uh, see the pictures immediately, but uh, you can talk to him and uh, describe uh, use the medical term to to, to describe uh, the the picture you see the to the uh, also pediatrics. So if you use the correct term, uh, uh, the also doctor will have the right pictures in his brain. He, even he or she still not see the pictures. Okay, so <clears throat> come back together. So like to make uh, some practice for this patient is uh, uh, as we see, this is a female shepherd. The first we should identify the bone. This is a femur. Okay, so it's a fracture with the angulation. So for this patient, we can see this is a tr transverse. It's a transverse fracture and uh, the bone fragment is over three part. And it, we can see this is, we can describe this a patient with a transverse comminution fracture over the female chapter at the middle third. The area may be the middle third to distal third junction with 100 displacement. Okay, and uh, you can see, you can also say uh, the, the angulation is with various angulation. Okay, so uh, if you describe where the X-ray, you the also pay data should have the image in his brain. Okay, the next, this is a radius. As we say, it's a radius shaped. Okay, the radial shaft fracture is also a transverse, or we can say this is a transverse diaphysi diaphysial fracture of the radius with a 100% displacement. And we can say this with the radiation angulation. Okay, so this is, <coughs> this is a, these are also the exam uh, examples, like a, the left one is a tibia shaft. Okay. This two picture are the one patient with different view. This is from the central view. This is a corner view. Okay, as we as we see, <coughs> it's a spiral fracture. Okay, which bone is a tibia bone and the tibia shaped, but the over the location with the distal third, uh, and the, the fracture pattern is a uh, the like a spiral fracture, but. Uh, as we think the fragment is more than three part, as I say, the spur fracture is a simple fracture. So uh, <coughs> we cannot use the term the spur fracture in this uh, analyzed fracture pattern. We can use the, uh, the comminution fracture. It's a tibia shaped uh, location, is a, is a comminution fracture over the distal, the tibia shaped uh, over the distal third one, with 100 D displacement without any integration. Also, you can describe this, use, use this discordation to, to make the image. Okay, so <coughs> now there is the, this one is a tibia shaft. And so <coughs> as we say, this is a tibia shaft and uh, I think this is a, also is a combination fracture or you can say it's a segmental fracture or oh, it's a tibia, uh, it's a segmental fracture over the tibia shaft uh, with uh, maybe 100% dis displacement uh, and uh, uh, no angulation. And uh, another is a fibula shaft fracture. This fracture is a, a simple fracture and you can say it's a mid-shaped mid uh, fibula <coughs> fracture. Uh, it's a, like a, so, uh, oblique fracture over the, the fibula shaft, uh, the, the middle of the fibula shaft was 100 displacement. Okay, so if, if you learn these words and you should know how to describe uh, the fracture and uh, describe the image. Okay, so uh, maybe next I will some, I, I will dis, uh, skip some PowerPoint and I will introduce you the uh, fracture treatment. Okay, the fracture treatment that uh, <coughs> we have two major two ways to treat a fracture. The first, <coughs> our goal to treat a fracture is to obtain the bone union. 
Okay, this is the most important things. So uh, there's a two ways to get to the bone union. The first is conservative treatment, and, the, and another is operation. The conservative treatment uh, means we can get uh, the, <coughs> the principle of these two treatment is to get the good, we use many these two kinds of to get the good holding reduction. That means that if we will get a fracture bone to reduction and the issue uh, to get them together, so holding them. So uh, the, how to holding them, the first is uh, traction and uh, the another is uh, casting and the uh, third is uh, functional bracing and the fourth and the, and the fourth and the fifth is the operative like the internal fixation and the external fixation. Okay, so the first I will introduce the casting and the splitting. And this is the most common for the conservative treatment. Okay. <clears throat> Just like this, this is a casting. Uh, with the fiberglass to holding the fracture side without the operation, we use the, uh, the, this is a casting. Okay, so if we use for a simple fracture or non-dispersed fracture, <coughs> we can use this. And uh, if for a patient with uh, acute or maybe it's not a good time to operation, like this, a multiple trauma with a patient is maybe in a, a poor conscious and a multiple organ injury uh, with a fracture, and uh, we can not operation immediately, so we can casting the the injury limb, the fracture limb, temporarily with a casting. That's this way. Okay, so for a patient, for a fracture with cross on dispress or a cross with reducible, maybe we can use a conservative treatment like a cast. Okay, like this one. This is a cast uh, above the knee, and this is a cast casting above the knee. Okay, so but the, there's some complication of the casting. Um, just like uh, if uh, the cast is too tight. Or we are related to the disovascular the injury. So, uh, if we do the casting, we will notice we are, we should make the bone holding. We should not to take her too loose the cast, but we can also not to get her too tight cast. So it need more experience to get a suitable casting. Okay. So another way is the traction. Or for a patient with a fracture, maybe we can, long bone fracture, we can use the traction to make the bone here. Okay, so traction have two, uh, two types of traction. One is the skin traction. Or we use the skin to uh, make the force on the skin to traction the bone. Or, and another is the scalar traction. And the, the, we can use the scalar traction to use more power to reduction and uh, keep the uh, power by using the skeletal traction. Okay, so <laughs> the next is the operation choice. Uh, <clears throat> there's a two operation choices. The first is the uh, external fixation. The external fixation with a for a temporary fixation. If we use it for the open fracture or, or if we use it for the damage control or infection control, now, and if we <coughs> acknowledge the definite fixation is the, we can say it's internal fixation, and we can also use the term ORI for open reduction and internal fixation. Okay, let's take a look for the external fixation. Just like this, if the patient is a fracture with a massive skin defect and poor soft tissue coverage, we cannot use the uh, internal fixation immediately because it's a high risk of uh, post-op infection. So we can uh, temporary fi fi fixation the bone with the external fixation. And if a patient with a pagal fracture, but uh, with massive bleeding and the multiple internal organ injury, uh, we can use the, uh, <coughs> the external fixation to do the damage control. And if a patient with the uh, bone with the infection, uh, with, with uh, the bone infection, like also myelitis, or maybe some implant related infection, we can also to remove the, the, the implant. But we also need to make the bone more 
stable, so we can also use, use the external fixation. So the indication for external fixation, uh, including the open fracture, uh, damage control, infection control. Okay, so, but there's uh, some, also some complication for the external fixation because of the, uh, maybe there, there's a uh, many pin trackers, sometimes it will have a pin tracker infection. And the stability is more, uh, less stronger than the internal physician. So sometimes there's a, uh, implant, uh, external physician loosen. Okay. So the next is, uh, the final part is the open, open physician choice. Okay. So the indication for the, uh, OIF, the, there's a absolute the indication and the, and the, the relative indication for the OIF for a fracture. And uh, we should know in uh, some situation, we cannot use the uh, open fracture, uh, up to the open reduction in the internal fixation, like if there's an open fracture and there's a uh, risk and uh, risk of infection, we cannot use the internal fixation. Also, the Open reduction under the derivation is indicated only when the cause fracture. We cannot use the uh, when we try to use the open fracture is when the cause fracture fails, and the when there's a maybe there's a lot of articular fragment that needs accurate position, so we cannot we can not use the conservation that we should open, and the for the apartment fracture because the fragment we we uh, cannot. Uh, uh, with the good reduction and the good for holding force by the conservative treatment. Okay, so when the operation is needed for associated injury. Okay, so like this, that's like this picture. So this picture is the ankle fracture, or uh, is a distal tibia fracture, but the fracture line involved to the ankle joint. It's to the ankle, according to the CT, the ankle joint, the articular involved. So uh, I think. Uh, uh, it's not easy to get to the good reduction force by the conservation. So this fracture will require the internal fit, uh, to do the good open reduction and then internal fixation. Okay, so there's a many types of internal fixation skills like the pin, wire fixation, screw fixation, practice fixation, and the intramedial nail fixation. Okay, so there's a many, if we discuss about a practice school physician, there's a many types of the type, uh, functional types. Okay, like this. These, these are the plating physician systems. And uh, these are locking plate, uh, locking plate physician techniques. Okay. And uh, for the long bone fracture, we always use the intramedular fixation on the, there's three kinds. The first is the central medullary. And uh, another is condylocephalic, and uh, another is cephalomedullary. And <coughs> first, in currently, on the, the long bone fracture, the first the gold standard for long bone fracture is used in traumatic nails, or like uh, the like tibia fracture or femur fracture, or sometimes in the humerus or forearm fracture, like this. If there's a long bone fracture over the femur shaft, we can use the gold standard, use the intramedial nail to make a, a good fixation and the stability to land in to make a bone here. Okay, for the tibia shaft, okay, even the segmental fracture, we also use the nail to get a good result. For the human fracture, we also use the nail to get a good result. Okay. Uh, uh, also in the long bone, like a radius on us, also use the nail to get the bone healed. Okay, so uh, the internal physician, we should know there's four, uh, we, uh, when we do the, in, do the internal physician, we have four considerations. The first is to hold, because to secure with the precise reduction. And another, another is the movement. If we use the internal physician, the patient could move more quickly. And the speed, speed means the patient gets internal fixation, the patient can label the hospital as soon as one here. And if we are con do a conservation or a traction, maybe they need more hospital time. Okay, but the safety is the cons 
third of the internal phase is because uh, we use uh, the implant into in our body, there's a risk of infection. So if we do the internal fixation, we should always for, uh, remember it, there should not be any infection sign and then we can use the internal fixation. Okay. So, okay. Okay, I think maybe I should finish our class today. Thank you. Okay, any question? Any question about today's lesson? Okay, thank you for your attention today. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dr. Chen.